It has been a half century since the Cuyahoga River caught fire. Tonight, we're looking back on just how far we have come. And good evening. Welcome to a special edition of Channel 3 News at 6. Sarah's off tonight. I'm Russ Mitchell. And I'm Betsy Kling, and we are here live on the banks of the Cuyahoga River. Tonight, we are going to be highlighting the river's rough past, but we're also focusing on the transition that is still taking place to make this the beautiful resource that we love. And it is. It's a sparkling night as well. It absolutely is. You know, this river used to be described as one that oozes rather than flows. That was particularly true the day in the days after the incident. There were several incidents after. Actually, mm -hmm. And that tarnished not only the river, but the city of Cleveland for decades. That's right. And uh, we often overlook this natural resource and that it has a job. Burn on, big river. Burn on. It's the legend that made it into pop music and culture and led to decades of jokes about our city. The burning of the Cuyahoga River. Most think of it as a singular event, as sparks from a train ignited the oil and debris on the river's surface near Republic Steel and caused $100,000 in damage to two nearby bridges. But according to the EPA, the river caught fire at least 13 times before June 22, 1969, and this time was merely the last. The picture of the burning river that made the cover of Time magazine in August of 1969 was actually from 1952, when a much larger fire caused more than a million dollars in damage to boats and the riverfront office building. According to Time, the 1969 fire was put out in half an hour, and no known photographs or video are known to exist. But there was some good that came out of the event that so tarnished the city's reputation. That final fire drew national attention to the problem of water pollution. Then Mayor Carl Stokes held a press conference at the site of the river fire and explained how industrial waste and the sewer system were part of the problem. He argued that a $100 million bond issue to keep raw waste out of the river would not be enough because rivers flow through so many municipalities. He pushed Congress to support federal pollution control. All of that attention led to the Clean Water Act and eventually the EPA. By 1989, the river was considered fireproof and insects, mollusks, and other signs of life had returned. 